and we're live. Hey. What up, guys? Hey. So would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Hello, people. My name is Melissa Wolf. I am the lead singer for Sepsis. I'm Cam Loud, I play guitar. Johnny Impact, I play bass. And I'm Sebastian, and I'm co-hosting. Yay! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> All right, so we'll get into uh, easy questions, and we'll get into some hard ones. All right. So how did you get your name? So, all right, sepsis, as most of you, I'm sure, know, is, in fact, a blood infection, if you spell it the original way, which yeah. is F-E-P-S-I-S. -S. Um, we added the extra S at the end to kind of drive ourselves away from that a little bit, make the name more uniquely ours so that you could find us more easily on things like Google. So we are very easily um, Google searchable. And we've got that nice little blue check next to our name on Facebook Hell so yeah. you can find us and everything. It's just so much easier. <laughs> so the hard question is, what would you like to leave as your legacy? What would I like to leave as my legacy? Well, I would really like to share our energy with people and I would hope that that would be really well known. Um, the lyrics and our music and everything. That's yeah. really something. That Make, making people. other people happy doing yes. something that we love. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's awesome. I, what's what, what's what's the guy over there with the blue hair? What's his name again? <laughs> silver hair. <laughs> it's silver, silver. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of blue. It's like turquoisey. Yeah. <laughs> He's um, Johnny. Johnny and Pat. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I do love the hair choice. Yeah, it's he was great. he was blonde like two weeks ago. Yeah. Everyone was giving me <laughs> shit for it. I was forgetting things too. So. He was like, <laughs> "I'm changing it right now." <laughs> right, yeah, I, I lost my phone twice. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna change my hairstyle up as well. Hold on here. Let's see. Let's see if I can. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's the best one. <laughs> I don't know. I dig the beard. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Very sweet. Yeah. He has a good beard. I got a crappy beard. <laughs> yeah, I dig the beard. Johnny had a little, Johnny had a big ass soul patch going like an hour ago. He got rid yeah. of it for this interview, just for you guys. Yeah. Oh. So. Yeah. You're fortunate. <laughs> so, what's going on? I haven't spoken to you guys in like a year. What's going on with you guys? So actually, we have a whole bunch of stuff going on right now. Um, we are preparing for the tour season coming up. Um, we have a show December 11th. We are opening up for Raven Black and Fate Destroyed will be there. Mantra of Mordo will be there. Uh, the Monster Dolls, Mischief will be hosting. And this is also a massive live stream event worldwide which is probably the best part because we've never done that before yeah, it's so our first time. if you've never seen sepsis ever at a live show and maybe you live in a different country or something oh, now is your chance to mm -hmm. see us oh yeah, yeah. we'll be live um, during that show and that is going to be in battle creek michigan yeah at the so music factory if you want to get your tickets they're available now in Battle Creek. Yeah, yeah Battle I Creek. love the name of that yeah, city. That is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Very metal. Yeah. Very metal. Yeah. So you got, so, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. You guys are doing just, is it one show that's going to be broadcasted? Yeah, via um, feeds, yeah. Um, all over the world. So it's not so it's not really a tour. It's just like a, a, a one show thing that's broadcasted then. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. and we have a tour with OTEF coming up as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah, excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, all the dates for that are available now on her bands in town. So definitely track her, give her a follow. Mm -hmm. Track all the other bands as well from December 11th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all, it's yeah. a really good lineup. I'm very excited to play with all these bands, honestly. Yeah, it's going to be good. Oh, and we got a Christmas song coming out. <laughs> yeah, we do. Nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, happy holidays. Yeah. <laughs> a sepsis yeah. Christmas song. Yeah, for those of you that didn't know, uh, last year we did um Santa Baby. Melissa Bars and Will killed that. That was actually Ooh, during yeah. the um quarantine. That was the first quarantine Christmas, so they were all huddled up for the winter and um 
did Santa Baby. It was very, very angelic. Santa Baby was fun. I'm going to keep this next Christmas song a secret. Yeah, we have. Uh, it's coming out soon, though. Stay <laughs> tuned. I promise you guys are going to love it. So if you weren't doing music at all, what would you be doing with your life? <laughs> Oof. Okay, there's so many other things I do that's kind of tough. Mm -hmm. um, I could potentially do modeling, um, video games, streaming, even though I already do that. Yeah, yeah I was going to say you do all those things. <laughs> so I, I do all those things. Um, I also draw, paint. I could have gone the art route. What about you guys? <laughs> I definitely, I would uh, go back to doing uh, metal work like fabrication and like car work and yeah, stuff really like that. that yeah i'm like the grease monkey of the band <laughs> <Mr. Cliff laughs> over here. so i'll go back to being a grease monkey <laughs> and if i wasn't doing music i would probably be a vet tech wow it's a fancy job yeah it was fancy that's surprising coming from you john yeah. They wouldn't let you have blue hair, though, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Or silver, whatever. It looks, yeah. blue, it looks blue over yeah. here. Oh, it was it's, more silver. It was silver, and like, then it turned blue. Like a week, maybe, it was silver. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of Millhouse-ish, but different. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of Millhouse-y. It is a little, it's a little millhouse -y. Yeah. But it more, but more, like more punk too. rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like punk rock. I see Mitch Spitz in the back. Yeah, yeah, dude, I freaking love, dude. I love. I look. I love metal and I love punk rock. Actually, I like. I like country too. I like all kinds of music. And if I had hair still, I probably wouldn't dye it because of my job. But I would want to. So I'm very jealous of that you're able to <laughs> I do that. I normally have the the colorful braids going yeah. on, but I decided to go natural for a little bit. <laughs> you got long hair, man. That is Thank you. Long and like thick <laughs> too, you know what I'm saying? This long. I want it longer. <laughs> so what is so what is your favorite part about being a musician and your least favorite part? My favorite part is probably seeing everybody's wonderful smiles after they've heard our music. The fact that People have come up to me and said that we've managed to change their lives in one way or another. And being able to connect with them on that level has really been a big thing for me. Do you ever get do you ever get nervous? Like when you're doing like these shows like you're gonna do um, with OTEP and whoever who all is playing there, do you ever get nervous knowing that another band is gonna be watching you guys like perform? Does that ever make you sweat a little bit um maybe for a little bit but i've definitely gotten over that before um and when i first started singing that was when i was nervous getting on stage like the first time i had ever played with sepsis um that was literally my first time ever stepping foot on a stage ever so I was like 17 years old. I was like, oh my God, I'm going on stage in front of all these people. And honestly, we used to suck really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so being as sucky as I was, I still managed to get up there. And I held on to the microphone for dear life. Yeah. And I just stood there and sang my heart out as best as I could. And uh, you know, after, after that, things got a bit easier. You know, over yeah. time, you learn how to perform and everything. But that was nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's great. Like it's it's I it's really awesome bringing joy to other people and stuff like that. But honestly, like mine, I really like the the slow hard progression of like trying to do something that's just impossible to you at one point in time, and just slowly like step by step and inch by inch. And then when you finally nail that for the first time, that's like the most satisfying thing for me. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's very satisfying. And it's like, at the same time, like nine times out of 10, you're in your room, like in your boxes playing on a crappy acoustic, but you're like, yeah, I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> So who is your biggest influence? Well, I can speak for myself. Um, I definitely have influences like Evanescence, hands down, um, Hailstorm. I got some Michael Jackson in there. 
um, Epica, Pantera, Dio, Lincoln Park, Ask Me Alexandria. I can go on forever if you want me to. <laughs> my, my first big one was um, Jimmy Page. And then um, my second and my favorite up to now is uh, Randy Rhodes. So those are my two my two dudes right there as far as guitars. Nice. Um, honestly, I'd have to say, uh, well, yeah, that guy's like playing with like a Jimi <laughs> Hendrix. That guy just always pushes you and encourages you to do better. So it's someone that I actually work with. Yeah. I know that. It's really cool. It's someone Will, I get to work with. Will's the best at pulling shit out of you that, like, in your head, you're like, I can't fucking do this, man. Yeah. I don't want to do this. So, as far as my influence, I had to say William he, Savant. He's awesome at, at at seeing potential in you that you don't see in yourself at the time. Yeah. William's like the band <laughs> Big Brother. Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he is. So what was your what was your emotion when you guys won the award? Oh my god, that was so awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what, what award did you guys win? So uh, we, during the music awards, yeah. hard rock metal act of the year. <laughs> this was our second time winning. I second count it, time. I count it as three just because they didn't do it in 2020. So we won in 2019. They didn't do it in 2020 because of the lockdown and stuff like that. Or tw mm. I, yeah, yeah, I got my ears right. Yeah, you got I'll your ears. I'll be honest. Right. I, was, I was actually yeah. so nervous. I was like, oh my god, are I we got you, win? Grandpa. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you can always make your own. You, you can like create your own award and then give it to yourself. Like I'm gonna create, like I'm gonna create the best podcast award the and give it to myself. There were a what? lot of this year. There were a lot of awesome bands that are really good friends of ours really talented guys that we were shocked that they didn't win in the yeah. categories they were nominated yeah. in we and like somebody, yeah. if i was still working at a metal shop or whatever i would have like cut something out of steel for him and just brought it to them. <laughs> you guys Huge won to me congratulations to all of the nominees yeah. honestly yeah. every single one of them deserved, deserved to be there absolutely <laughs> right and then there's some that might be better than us so <laughs> you know so what was the so what was the first concert you ever went to? Ooh, the first concert I ever went to was Drowning Pool. Damn. And both my brothers took me. Um, Let the to that the and um, so rest in peace, Chris. He's he's gone now. Um, one of my older brothers, but um, they both took me to this show, and they actually they swore that they were going to get me to the front during the show i was like 14 15 years old something like that and they were like we're gonna get you to the front we're gonna get you there don't you worry and yes there were mosh pits at this event so of course me ne never gone to a metal show or anything before i went through the mosh pit with them and of course i didn't look behind me like every now and then you're supposed to kind of look back you know yep. see if there's any crowd surfers or anything there's a crowd surfer um foot in face um oh, landing on top of my head body is flying uh, so of course all, all these people are landing on me oh it was a war zone and um of course these nice people kept picking me back up you know because i would just fall to the ground because i'm just this little How girl 14, 15, somewhere around there. <laughs> I didn't it was know what was going zone. on. So, um, yeah, it was definitely a war zone. And was they it? pushed me through. I got up. I made it to the front. And it was an awesome show. I had banged <laughs> and just rocked out the whole time. It was was it the Was it the original lineup? Um, It was. And okay. I think Diecast was there with them. I can't recall, but it might have been Diecast. It was a great show. <laughs> I was there for drowning pool. <laughs> there's, so, there's so many bands that like come and go. Like I remember going to Ozfest and I bought probably five or six CDs from different bands when I was there, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of those bands even really made it like big at all. I mean, they're, they're big enough to play Ozfest, but you know, so going to shows, looking back on, looking back on it, you know, lots of bands you see, it's like, Whatever happened to these guys? You know, I thought they were yeah. like, I freaking love them, you know, but it's kind of one of those things where there's kind of so many bands and then and maybe they are still bands, maybe they're in other bands now. I think most most musicians kind of stay uh 
musicians, even if their band breaks up, they start new bands. You know? Yep. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. It's a it's a life thing. Fuck that! I quit. I quit music and started a podcast. <laughs> I like I don't know. I couldn't put down music. I, I still do it to kind of like podcasting is kind of the same thing, right? Yeah, it's not the same thing, but I get to talk to musicians. Yeah, that's yeah. A, no, and that's awesome, man. Because yeah. these are these are the things we do when we're not playing shows, man. This makes it so we still get to interact with fans and we still get to talk and do what we love to do. Mm-hmm. And, and people like you make that possible. It's just as important, man. Thank you. John, what was your first concert? August Burns Red. That was your first concert? Really? First. Nice. Wow. Nice. Good for you, man. Mine, um, I, got I don't even know. Out. I, I think I was like I eight. Him, I think I was like eight years old, and um, there's a radio station here, Rock 101. They do fireworks in Manchester, and um, Shine Down had just started getting big from their first album, so that was my first that was my first concert with Shine Down. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I I remember seeing Shine Down at Ozfest when I went. That's awesome. Yeah, they were really good. He had like this red hair going on yep. and everything at the time. They had just Pretty they cool. had just done the the Skinner cover and they had that that um forty five song. Yep. The, and yeah, like that, that's that all they were no, Yeah, that that that's time. like that was their biggest stuff at the time. Now they're one of the like biggest bands in the world. <laughs> <laughs> they're still writing music too. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's Mark, an amazing. You singer. know who else was at that Ozfest in this moment? And really, she, she wasn't that big yeah. back then. <laughs> so she, I remember her coming out because she came out with this um, frilly pink skirt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, "Who is this?" Yeah. <laughs> and she just starts screaming. I was like, "Oh, that's cool. That's awesome." <laughs> You guys have way better first concerts than my first concert. <laughs> like my first concert ever, my parents took me to it, and they don't even listen to rock music at all. But my dad was part of this board, whatever. Credence Clearwater. That's awesome. I was like 10, I think. 10. Yeah. But then my first concert I actually went to that I wanted to go to was Papa Roach. But that was before Pop. So their drummer. The, I used to babysat uh, at the drummer's house a long, long time ago. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, yes. that was the first concert I ever actually wanted to go to his poppers. This is like way before they got famous and signed. They were still local. They're from a, a town called Vacaville, California, where I was from. And their concerts were freaking so cool. Like, way better than Creedence Clearwater. <laughs> <laughs> way better I than love Creedence well, Human. That's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> my big, like, my first concert technically was Orange Nine Millimeter, but the big arena show was the first Family Value Store. Oh wow! Nice. So it was Corn, Limp Biscuit, um, Ice Cube, um, Orgy, Rob Stein, and I don't remember who else was on that bill. How do you remember that? That's awesome. <laughs> Like I went, I went to the Family Value Store. All of them Mayhem Fest a while ago. They were awesome. Do you remember all the bands when you went to Mayhem Fest? Or, yeah. Um. So it was Corn, Rob Zombie. That's awesome. Oh yeah, they were killer. Yeah, I would love killer. to see Rob uh, Lamb of God was there. Yes, they were. And I can't remember who else there was. There, there was a massive lineup. It was a lot of bands, but those, those were the main people. Yeah, I, every time I go to a concert, I just kind of remember a few of the bands, unless I buy I, something from them. Um, it was years ago, though. You know, I can't really remember. I honestly remember every concert I've been to and who was opening. What? That's awesome. I have some old tickets that I saved. I, I don't have my tickets anymore, but I'm that guy that wants to be there early to see who the openers are. Yeah, man. That's good. That's awesome to do that, too. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. That's I have a, I have a lot of friends that what do you call it don't want to go that early and I'm like no, you, you don't know. you don't know you don't know if they're gonna be the next big thing you don't, yeah. you don't. no it's some of the and, best music I hear man is is playing or going to local chill. shows man and mm-hmm. and and nine times out of ten like it's it's them in their best form too because a lot of them their albums and their cds don't do them justice anything compared to their live show man and that's 
that's some of my favorite stuff to see is is young hungry bands really working and 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 playing with their heart playing like they need to to survive you know and sometimes it's the opposite sometimes their music sounds really freaking awesome and then you go watch a show and you're like fuck these guys suck in my experience it's like it's the exact opposite but like i said nine times out of ten like mm -hmm. i fall in love with every band that i see play on a stage <laughs> you know what i mean they're, 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 we're very fortunate for the area that we're in. There's a lot of talent yeah. around here. Oh, yeah. There yeah, are there are CD talent. bands though. There are yeah, just yeah. CD bands. Yes. <laughs> like I'm gonna I'm gonna catch shit for this, but I think Lamb of God's a CD band. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, Hoobastank is a CD he, band. He has, he hesitantly <laughs> agreed with you. He hesitantly he's like, yep, yep, yeah. yep. He's like, fuck, man. I hope we don't ever open up for them. <laughs> and then they're gonna see this. Like, you call me a CD band, bro? You call me a CD That's band? That's not a bad thing. Well, they, like, thankfully, they're... honestly, like, um, I I got into the 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 local music scene when I was very young, and I kind of like the time I was in high school and from that time forward, there were a couple like mainstream mm -hmm. metalcore bands that I loved and stuff like that. But for the most part, they're like all my favorite stuff were like, you know, you had to buy them on cassette at Anchors Up because they were just weird kids that wanted to put music out on cassette. You know what I mean? And that was the, a lot of the stuff I, I listened to in my young adulthood, you know, and now I, I focus on playing my own stuff and trying to write my own stuff. And I do have like newer bands that I listen to, but for the most part, I try to, I try to stay away from it just so I don't get influenced by yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like I, it's like I said, I'm I love Jimmy Page same. and Randy Rhodes growing up. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've ripped so many licks from them and stuff. It's like, I'm trying to focus on making my own now. Mm -hmm. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good to have your own creative, uh, your own creative thought without like when I started my own podcast, the loud spot, I never let her to podcast before in my life. And everyone's trying to give me suggestions on who to listen to. I was like, dude, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. Man. You know, and, and come up with your own way of, of doing things. Cause then, 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 then it's your, then it's your own. Um, it, you're not ripping somebody else off if, if you're just doing it yourself. And also the older we get, we kind of quit listening to as much new music. I think, I think, People kind of get stick to into what their, yeah. their generation for the most part. Mm -hmm. I get stuck in my, like, same thing I listen to now is the same thing I listen to in high school. Mm -hmm. like, it's hard for people to listen and to new As music. a guitar player, though, I can tell you just from playing, like, other bands and stuff like that, there's nothing, like, worse than, like, when you think you've written a masterpiece and you show your buddy and then he shows you, like, the song that your subconscious like like i was excited maybe i'm the only one who was excited about the new limp biscuit album but I it was good. yeah once i heard it they came out there i was like <laughs> like this is me going back to my you know late teens early 20s but limp biscuit mm -hmm. album, i was like i can't like i heard every single song you know uh on, on the album because i was a limp biscuit fan uh, back then, and now that I'm, you know, pushing forty, we don't have to tell everyone that though. Uh, <laughs> I, I still am, you know. Yeah. That's like if someone were to tell me that there was a new Alice Anna album out, I'd have to grab it up. <laughs> yeah. I'd right. be like, oh my god. Limp Bizkit's like a funny one for me because I never would have like called myself a Limp Bizkit fan, but like Chocolate Starfish was one of like my favorite CDs all I must have listened to that more than like that was probably one of my most played CDs when I was growing up you know what I mean so the hot dog flavored water yeah <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of that what was your first CD ever bought oh, not gifted you bought yourself that I bought myself yes uh... mine's coolio uh mine was um I had see I had hybrid theory, but my brother gave me that. I think the first one I bought was um American Idiot my Green Day. Okay. How old are you? I really can't <laughs> I'm remember. 28. I'm 22? I'm I'm <laughs> <laughs> I really can't remember. I've had so many CDs. But I but like the the same time I bought that, I think I bought like my CD set of like the Beatles White album. So I was like okay. I was a strange kid musically. I was listening to like I loved prog. I loved like Rush and stuff like that, and like 
August Burns Red I listened to early. So I had a lot of – when I had my Walkman CD player on the bus, I had a backpack full of, like, the most random CDs you could grab probably. I want to say it was Nickelback. Uh. <laughs> 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 I want to say it was one of the first ones that I bought. Mm-hmm. Might have been Nickelback. <laughs> hey, their first album was really. You know, I'm not. I don't hate Nickelback. I really it was don't. Good. It was no, good. Yeah, yeah no. no. People they're they're just, just, they're just, this controversy they're just fun, that they're because they're fun to beat up album. on. I guess. I, guess I, I love that metal up. album that they got. I remember when I album. when I started getting into metalcore and metal. Something I remember worse, this uh, this horse. chick I had a crush on. Yeah. She was yeah. like, she came to my birthday and she's like, I got you a CD. I think you're going to really like it. And I was, this is like when I was getting into like more modern metalcore, all screaming stuff, like really heavy stuff. And she got me a Nickelback CD. I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I got you this really heavy, this really heavy band. I think you're going to like <laughs> There's two kinds of people in this world: people that love Nickelback and people that lie about loving Nickelback. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yes. 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 yes, I like Nickelback. Yes. We all know we all have Nickelback lyrics. I'm not like somewhere. super obsessed with them or anything, but I'll play them. Yes. Yeah, why not? I'm getting a Nickelback tattoo right after this show. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, you want? Just a nickel on your back, or? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I'd pay to see that. It's just a nickel. Well, how much are you going to pay me to do it? Because I really will do it. If you're going to pay me for it. I have to say, my first CD was Pro Jam 10. There you nice. go. That's a good one. That was, a, that, that was the first CD you bought. Can you remember yours? Yeah. yeah. Red, jump set, red Jumpsuit Apparatus. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Good one. I think are they still doing music? I think I think I heard they were still writing. They're, yeah, they're still they, around. They they pulled a Green Day. They completely switched their sound, but they had that one good album that was on Course Park Four. You asked my 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 personal opinion. <laughs> Not to offend, I I love Red Jumpsuit, still to this day. Just yeah. I, I gotta ask you guys. Um, so, you guys recently got signed. Is it signed? Is it a record label or like a management team or what's up with that? Pavement Entertainment is a record label. They are a branch of Sony. Oh, cool. okay, okay. Sony Orchard. When did you guys get signed on with them? That was in twenty twenty. Oh, so so a year ago. Yeah, so a year ago. They do a lot for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Be, would you say? Would you say being signed? And I'm not trying to get you in trouble here. Okay. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at each other over here. Yes. Okay. All right. Would Would, would you? Yeah, would, awesome. would, you uh, would you say that being independent, being an independent <laughs> artist, and then going on to like the record label? has really made a significant difference in your audience or your listeners. That, no. (laughs) No, 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 that's us. Okay. (laughs) So what what do you even, I'm I'm curious, and I've asked a lot of bands this on my own show, you know, what is it that the, what is it that the record label does for you specifically that makes you want to stay with them? Distribution. Ah, okay. Well, distribution, I mean, isn't everything streaming? I'm sorry? <laughs> isn't everything just kind of streaming? Um, so they so they just pay for the distribution on, like, Spotify and Apple and all that stuff? That is part of it, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, of course, they help, of course they help with the tours. <laughs> but they do, do they? help with it on touring, yes. <laughs> That's something that they could do for us. Yes. So they help book. I guess. I guess they also help book. Uh, do they give you like a booking agent and all that stuff, or do you, is that something completely separate from the label itself? Booking agents are separate. Yeah. 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 Okay. The record label could. They definitely could. Yeah. They could do a lot of things. Yes, they could. 
I'm gonna, I feel like I'm going to send him an email right after this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably get a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dang>. Sorry. <laughs> I love you guys. So, is there is there anything you would want to change in the music industry that you see that could be better? Yeah, uh, shitty promoters <laughs> ripping off bands yeah. to, for shitty time slots and shitty shows. That's a good one. In their own yeah. backyard. It's, yeah, in their <laughs> own backyard. Um, yeah, and um, and part of it is the band's fault. Like, because bands, we love playing music, and promoters. There are good promoters out there, believe it or not. I've met a few. They're usually playing in bands or managing bands. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, shitty promoters take advantage of the fact that we love what we do and we would do it for free. We would do it either way, and uh, they do that to too many bands. And too many. And I would love for that to change because I don't mm -hmm. think I need to use my friends to make someone money at the door and with their liquor and <laughs> with, with their property and with my music, I think, uh, I think the, the stuff could be spread a little more evenly. Yeah. All I'm around. 100% with you. <laughs> if, if you think about it, if we're bringing people to your crib. It's flight to tip the dude, the people that brought your friends to make your, your place look awesome it's it's a courteous thing like yeah you i own a venue you i asked you to play here you guys did so graces gracefully you put the time you put the gas and you and you brought all your friends here local or mainstream whatever but when you fill that floor you should be able to get your fair cut yeah and that's and that's just it saying hey thank you come like i want you guys to come back mm -hmm. what what happens to a lot of us is we get screwed over and we have mm -hmm. a bad experience and it's like we don't want to go there anymore <clears throat> like and that's sure. unfortunately there's there's a few venues around here where that you, you know you know what though if you, there's a positive side to the to, to this also though uh as a band such as yourselves you learn when someone takes advantage of, of you you learn how to not make that same mistake again yeah and yeah. You know, it's better to make those mistakes when you're just starting out and with yeah. your band especially if you, if you see it as a career um you make those mistakes as a young band and then as you grow, you learn not to make those mistakes. Because it would suck. Imagine if you never made those mistakes before. And then now that you're getting more recognition, more people are liking you guys, you get more of an audience. Imagine making that that same mistakes that you made when you first started. Now it'd be a lot more detrimental um, to you guys, right? So you, you live and you learn. So it's almost a good thing that there's people, not that it's a good thing, but it's better if it happens to recognize it early. Yeah, it's early. Yeah. It's only exactly. 10 years, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. 10 years of that's, that's the, that's the only way mistakes are beneficial is if, is if you learn from them, man. To grow wasn't, wasn't, yeah. it, wasn't it, wasn't it, you guys were, uh, uh, you guys started like in a basement or was there something about a, yeah, 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 basements and Craigslist. I'll never forget that story. Oh yes. Oh yes. There was a dark creaky basement mm -hmm. and a Craigslist post. Yeah. So ten years ago, um, we formed Sepsis um when I originally met William through his Craigslist post. So he had posted looking for a band. I was looking for a band. I was like, cool. We had a lot of the same influences, you know, so I hit him up. And I went to his old creaky basement in the middle of Manchester, New Hampshire. <laughs> and I was 17 years old at the time. I was like, okay, let's do this. So I went down in the basement and there's a whole bunch of people rapping. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm here for a, a metal thing, right? Like we're doing the metal thing. And he starts ripping it up on the guitar. He's like, of course we're doing the metal thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nice. All right, this is what I came here for. 
Of and, uh, <laughs> what else would we be doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so he started surfing it up on the guitar. Because that's how Will sounds. Now we're thick <laughs> air guitar, bro. I had some of my covers. I had like an Evanescence cover. I had some of my original stuff at the time from the previous bands I was in that were so shitty. It was all MIDI. <laughs> it was terrible. And I, I was like, here's what I can do. He was like, we can work with that. And uh, <laughs> He gave me a track to listen to. I came back a week later with a song. It was awesome. And uh, there was supposed to be another girl trying out that day. She never showed up. So I kind of landed the part. And they got the wrong left so they <laughs> Yeah, up. They, they thought I was Ashley. Yeah. They thought I was the other girl. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was an Ashley. I was That's Ashley right. that day. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Ashley, you missed out. <laughs> That's funny. My dad. <laughs> She's so mad right now. I guarantee you. So. Damn it! Oh shit! <clears throat> That's our story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I met my wife on Craigslist in a creepy basement. Just kidding. Did you? <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. He's on the internet. everywhere. Yeah, I met him on Craigslist on the. Uh, three years ago so we've been using craigslist for a long time uh, i think most of the band are craigslist I love craigslist. babies I, yeah. craigslist most I, got, of I got referenced it's incredible yeah you oh. were a friend of a friend of a friend yeah drinking so, buddies like Drink, drinking so, buddies yeah so he now, was look, a now look at you in all your glory you were craigslist <laughs> with I your hair no, I just, <laughs> i'll quit talking about your hair i promise i'll quit talking i about think it. joe was craigslist too yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure he Joe's a Craigslist dude. <laughs> he's, he's our new drummer. He's awesome. Bars, Joe bars. Mercy. Oh, you guys got a new, <laughs> got a new, a new yeah. drummer? I'm sorry? You guys got a new drummer? Yeah, yes. Joe. His name's Joe Mercy. He's new to the band. He's, new he's with. fantastic. Newest. I like how she says I'm sorry and gets closer to the computer because normally people like lower my voice. Normally they're lowering it and you're like, what? No. I'm I'm partially yeah. deaf in one ear. Oh. So it's hard for me oh. to hear. Oh. The time and I gotta be like, what? <laughs> perfect. You're What's perfect. For me. <laughs> I think my wife wishes I came with the remote control to just turn me down in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bye. <laughs> That'd be a great April Fool's prank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, mate, right here. I promised Rob I wasn't going to take over his show, damn it. All right, Rob, I'm done talking. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, well, a little deep question here. What would be your last meal? My last meal, lobster. Hands down. Dude. I love seafood. What? No <laughs> She's a I love seafood. Seafood. Absolutely, I love seafood. Fish, lobster, throw it at me. If it swims, I'll eat it. <laughs> well, now fish, fish and chips, chip. seafood. I'm chip. telling you, it's yeah, the one. I'm the only land lover here. I'll pick a steak Ugh. all day. Any steak, boring. Yes. T bone, sirloin. <laughs> boring. That is not boring. <laughs> that is not boring. Fish and chips and shrimp. You bro. know what fish tastes mm. like? They taste like fish. <laughs> yeah. I'm, all I'm all set. I'll take his. <laughs> yeah. I'll take his yeah. plate. You're gonna have to split that. <laughs> Me and Johnny will take like, your What do you want? This delicious, like, <laughs> sweating cut of meat or like this, this, like, sea bug? This little thing with tentacles. I don't care if it's a bug in the sea. That. I'm cracking it open. Yeah, Let's it's go. Like, <laughs> what do you want? This, this nice brown slab of beef jerky or, it's or the this sea gigantic cockroach? cockroach. <laughs> every <laughs> every oh, single, yeah. every single vegan. Now hates your band. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat I'm an sorry. impossible steak before I'll eat, uh, before I'd like seafood on. No, we're meat. Really? Okay. We yeah. love the meats. Yeah. I, like, I, you know what? I love I love oysters. A lot of people don't like I oysters. See, okay, this is why I'm weird. Because I will eat oysters and I do like sushi. So I like raw fish. I love sushi. Yes. Yeah. I love okay, sushi. you like raw fish. <laughs> so, My father is a hunter, so I grew up yeah, on meats. Yes. Yeah. Like real meats. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. deer, <laughs> bear, like all of it. Mm -hmm. I've never had bear meat, but Robin, no. you had bear meat before? No, I, I have not. You try my mother's bear balls. They're so good. <laughs> Ooh, bear, <laughs> bear balls. Bear balls. Gators are pretty good. 
Gator is good. Yeah, I I've gator, never yeah. had gator. gator. I want to try gator. I mean, so, see, yeah. I had gator jerky. And much like when people are driving by the ocean and you're like, oh, you smell that? You can taste that in good seafood. That's what I don't like about seafood. Yeah. That gator gator tasted very similar, only yeah. instead of like ocean breeze, it was like swamp Chicken. mist. <laughs> <laughs> right. it, was like, it was like swamp bayou mist, sweat. Like a little bit of bayou sweat and some beef jerky. That's what, that's oh, oh, I've only had legs. gator ass jerky. I never had frog no, legs. No. What? It frog like legs are good. It's like, it tastes like, almost, it almost tastes like chicken. I yeah. heard it tastes like, it like chicken. chicken. But but like with a seafood uh, twist to it, so kind of like if your chicken went bad, but it still tastes good. <laughs> like, like chicken fist? Like questionable chicken. <laughs> questionable chicken questionable with a good flavor. Chicken. I had some questionable salami the other day. I, I, I was <laughs> out of it. I made it like I was halfway, there for that. Made it like halfway through the sandwich. I'm like, I shouldn't be eating this. I really should. Yeah. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. He goes, I see if he mics it up and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> Comes out like five minutes later. He's like, "Yo, and some questionable salami." I'm like, "Bro, there's a whole other stack of salami right yeah. here that you could have had." I don't like wasted food. It's right. As, as, you, as you can tell, we're we're Italian. Yeah. So I, I, I know. I'm Italian. And I'm a Puerto Rican. And Italian. I don't, I'll be Guilty. honest. I don't know. I don't know that. Also fact. Italian. I'm just talking with my hands. It was a joke. Italian, <laughs> <laughs> man. I'm telling you, it's a thing. I'm telling you. I'm telling, telling you, I'm telling, telling you, it's a thing. It's a thing. All right, so. Okay. I'm on the media. So, what is your biggest fear? My biggest fear of water. Water? That's I don't like. I don't, I don't like fish. big open oceans next to like big boats and things. She likes I don't like being water. in a boat. I mean, I, I'll swim in a pool or something, but like, don't put anything under my feet. Like, no, seriously, like, do not put me out in a lake. Don't put me out in an ocean. Nothing where things can swim under me. Like, I'm all set. I don't I'm like that. I'm the same way. I prefer yeah. to God. I it's a it. big fear for me. Like, I'm talking, like, top, top. Like, what if, like, a fish touches your foot? I love I'm your, all set. I love it when that happens. <laughs> I'm out of there That's so awesome. fast. You, never swim in school, you will never see me like... swim faster. <laughs> it's awful. It's really not. What's your biggest fear? Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't laugh, ready? I'm going to laugh. Ticks and tapeworms. Ticks and tapeworms. I can understand a tapeworm. Um, a tapeworm yeah. that right off of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depending on where they go. Oh, uh, did that happen I, to you? Yeah, I had bad oh. experiences. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I, had, I had two. I had two. Oh my god. Yeah, Why? so now I don't know what to answer, but you make me. Why? <laughs> Ever since then, I was petrified of ticks. Oh my gosh. Am yeah. I yeah. Out? And I, I wouldn't get out. Like it was like, I'm like, eh. yeah, it's not not a good time. It's not good. Little hitchhiker on your scrotum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a few. Uh, it was a train of hitchhikers. See, it wasn't just one. You're making me want to say poison ivy just because I saw someone with like really terrible poison ivy. This kid came into school and he and he was like a really good looking kid. And he came into school one weekend. And the funniest part about it is we we were in the eighth grade. And we had to do like one of those presentation days to all like the elementary school kids. So we had all these like really, really young kids checking out our projects and stuff like this. My buddy Ben, he came to school. I'm not even exaggerating. He looked like Gollum. Like you couldn't even recognize him anymore. His face was all swollen. Oh my God. Got all over his pecker. He was telling me all about it. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so bad. But I'd probably honestly say mine is heights. Which is funny because I yeah. I climb a lot and I'm a really good climber. So you would never jump out of an airplane. I would love to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> what? Like I'm all right if I I'm all right if I feel oh safe, but like it definitely gets my heart going. I used to I used to do steel work and iron. How work, do you so... feel safe jumping out of airplanes? Because parachutes are very. <laughs> no, no. What if it doesn't open up though? What if like, it doesn't open up? You got to reserve. 
my stepdad was in the and army airborne so i've been like i always used to talk to him about jump that was like a dream of mine was like jumping out of planes and stuff like that so i would have gone into the military if the army would have let me join the air never catch but me they didn't like out of a plane. they didn't like the tattoos and all that stuff so <laughs> but if they if they would have said yes you can come in yes you can do airborne i probably would have gone just to jump out of planes honestly but you're not that scared of heights <laughs> i i am though like if I don't, because I've been climbing before, and I'll be fine, I'll be moving good. But if if something's off or something doesn't feel right, my knees start shaking, and I start like, oh no, <laughs> I start yeah. feeling my my mortality creeping in. I would, quick. I would catch hypothermia and burn my hair off before I ever jumped out of an airplane. <laughs> I would <laughs> shave I my head before. I would you, shave, you shave your head. I'll uh, shave my head before I jump out of an airplane. I, I, would, I would do it just to do it because it's so I mean, expensive and stuff like that. Too. I, like I mean, I, I once had done it a couple times. I'll probably be over it, but you know, you're like, like, I would love the squirrel I, suit, but I know I'm probably never going to be able to. But I'll, I'll talk that crap like I can. So, um, did you ever jump off a bridge? Yeah. See, like I grew up doing rope swings and stuff like that, and I and I love doing it. But this is what I think of all the rope swing trees. We used to like nail two by fours to the trees and climb up them and jump off them that was always way scarier than doing the rope swing even if it was from really really high i've never jumped off of a bridge but i almost <laughs> fell through one in the force you to lay down music video <laughs> <laughs> that was fun <laughs> so the the railroad tracks were right above traffic yeah. And they were covered in ice. It was an old bridge, too. It was old and creaky, <laughs> like the basement. Yeah. And, uh, so a theme so here. They, they had this one part in the music video where they were like, you need to go walk on, on those railroad tracks over there. As icy as they were, I had heels on. Well, I was do like, some you, spins. You can't be serious. Do, do some trolley stuff. Come fun, on. Fun fact. <laughs> and of course, I, I did it. But I, I swear to God, I was going to fall right through. And I'm, I'm shocked I didn't. <laughs> Fun fact. I made it alive. Oh, what? No, go ahead. <laughs> Melissa literally almost died in every music video. <laughs> Seems to be a fun. There's fact always like one. Stuff. There's always like one sketchy yeah. thing. There's always that improv. Like it's usually hypothermia. It's never <laughs> planned out. Yeah, well, that's planned out. Oh, it's always like it's going to be really cold. But there's always that like, yeah. hey, that looks cool. Go climb up over there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's, let's go the... jump on that a little bit. Why don't yeah. you jump in in the lake in the middle yeah, of November? Splash in the water. <laughs> yeah, you look great. A little bit. <laughs> Why don't you uh, set things on fire behind you? Yeah. Your hair catches on yeah. fire. Yeah. Right? yeah, that was awesome, right? That was great. That was in. You got um, to play with fire. Falling in love. Yeah, you'll see that. We you won't see my hair catch fire, but yeah. it did. You got, to play, <laughs> you got to play with the metal stuff, and um, you already know. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad nobody's. I'm yeah. glad nobody's biggest fear is questionable salami. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Go ahead, Rob, 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 trying. We'll go ahead, Rob. No, I was trying to thought, but um, <laughs> choo choo. So with every with every music video, you said you almost, you almost died in almost every music video. Yeah. Was something faulty or just mishaps? Well, um, like he mentioned, and you already know, he had sparks flying behind me <laughs> from metal objects that he yeah. was, you know, mm -hmm. working with. Um, so there was that that almost that could have, you know, and that sparked was part, me. You already know it was probably the <laughs> safest one out of them yeah. all, yeah. honestly. And I was like, I took I took my grinder with like a big big cutting wheel, big hunk of steel from behind there, and I'm just like shooting it up. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's homemade pyrotechnics, man. Force it's kind of stuff. Had the railroad tracks we were talking about. Yeah. Um, there was another music video where I had to like hang halfway out of a car in the middle of the highway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like hanging out the I car. We're, we're driving that. really fast. Oh, God. We're going. Seems safe. Hey, who volunteers to hang out of a car going 60 miles an hour? 
Yeah. I'll do it. Oh, do it. Yeah. 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 I'm literally hanging out the car. Yeah. Though. Like half my body is yeah. out of the car. Yeah, it's tea top. I'm like doing my lyrics and stuff, doing my hand it's, motions. It's, 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 it's like an 80s and 90s Camaro with tea top. And so we popped them off. It was right such a small that. clip. It like, wasn't even worth it. Yeah. And not to and not to say it. anything no. bad about anyone, but the but the other I was driving the film car and I was so ready for this and I know how to drive well. The one driving the important car, which was the, the car Melissa was in, wasn't as good. Yeah. Honestly, it wasn't as a. Uh, we push, weren't in sync. Push, I nearly caught hypothermia because it was in the middle of winter yeah. and all I had on was like this little black dress. Mm -hmm. It was so cold. Like plus, we're talking middle of a blizzard. We were out there in a real blizzard. Multiple shots in the blizzard. There were different you blizzards. You can see how blue my lips are. The snow yeah. wasn't right. Yeah. You went out in the first blizzard and the yeah. snow was too big and wet. You just shot that multiple times. Went to the times. second it blizzard. It was too. It was too windy and blowy. Yeah, and the, the snow wasn't right. Were too, yeah. yeah. Thirty blizzards. It took it a lot really of blizzards. It really did. It was yeah. a lot of blizzards. <laughs> And a lot of hypothermia. <laughs> you know how I many blizzards it took us to build blizzards? Speaking of hypothermia, the original Black Light Invasion, they stuck me in the middle of a lake mm -hmm. um, in the middle of November. You did get So I had to there. walk into the water <laughs> in a dress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was so cold. You know, you have a say in what you want to do, right? And what you no. don't want to do. No, no, no. No. Don't say. no. There was no say. We saw that shot. People look. Like, Yo, going they everything. don't care. They're not the ones doing it. We had to, the, uh, get out there in that blizzard. We don't care. We had, the, info, we had the the almost caught Melissa's hair on fire and hypothermia in um to write hate with the gasoline hay fire. In oh, the, that's um, right. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh the, my god. In the snow. We weren't. We More weren't fire. even. We weren't More even fire. planning on doing it. We were literally just like we finished doing our stage shot and all the stuff inside, and we were gonna do something else. And as we were walking out, just like the section looked really good. It was all iced over. There were giant snow banks and stuff like that. And there was a bunch of hay there and gasoline. And we were like, well, we could do like fire or snow Let's shot. burn everything. Yeah, yes. <laughs> this will be cool, man. <laughs> and then I'll never forget, like we went to go do it. And like Will still had his sweatshirt on and stuff. I'm like, take that sweatshirt off, bro. We're all freezing out here. <laughs> Again, you can see how blue our lips are yeah. if you really pay That's, attention. It was like, the cold really shot. What, what video is that? So happy. Uh, to, to write, write hate. hate on his arms. Which one? To, to write, write hate. hate on his arms. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like that guy with the beanie. He's a cool dude. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I'd be in a band with them too. I see why. I see why you guys play music together. Yeah. Now we're a perfect fit. Yeah. <laughs> So what was your coolest moment on stage and an emotional moment? An emotional moment for me is when I looked into the crowd and I saw this one guy actually crying over our music. That was really emotional. That was actually um, Wave Breakers. I was going to see mine was from Wave Breakers, too. Yeah, so kind of Wave it. Breakers on Hampton <laughs> Beach. It was an amazing um, show. We were headlining that show. It was awesome. Yeah. Definitely one of my favorites. I didn't see the guy, but somewhere out there, yeah. there is a photograph of this man. You can just see the whole crowd while we're playing, and there's some dude like. Yeah, you can you can like see one of those how chicks emotional from the he 60s, is. Yeah. Like looking at the yeah. Beatles. I remember seeing it, like being like, we're playing that's cool yeah. that's cool that's a cool feeling mm -hmm. makes you want to continue to do you know it's, it's things like Absolutely. that Absolutely, we got to keep going after stuff yeah. like that we've had people get our tattoos and stuff it's amazing we have so many people out there with sepsis tattoos mm -hmm. um, it's, all, it's, all the different it's, versions of the star it's th it's things like that that you know because everyone can get complacent and just it becomes the norm almost, you know, especially as, as Rob and I, you know, as we both know as podcasters, um, it's easy to kind of get into the kind of same rhythm. It gets kind of a little boring sometimes, but then there's little things like that, that motivate you and seeing someone cry in an audience or seeing people get your tattoos and really promoting you guys makes you feel good mm -hmm. about what you're doing. And, and that, that goes with, with us as we're all in the entertainment industry and, and little positive things like that really motivate us to keep on pushing forward and you know it's, it's an awesome feeling yeah i remember seeing this one tattoo that johnny socks got shout out johnny socks he actually 
tattooed the sepsis star on his head. Mm-hmm. On his head. Wow. wow. On his yeah. head. Yeah. Massive star right on his head. Yeah. Cool. That's why. I'm going to get that also right under my Nickelback tattoo. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah so, I, I want photos. I want proof. So you have to have the nickel on your back and that's going to be your Nickelback tattoo. Yes. And then like, oh I don't know, you should get, you should put the steps to start kind of like right, right there. Why is he telling? Like right, right there. <laughs> no, I'm getting right, right, right under the nickel on my back. I'm going to get right under the nickel on my back. It's going to say sepsis with a star. Yeah. Yes. Or sw- swarmies or what what don't you have a nickname for your fans? Yeah, swarm, yes, swarm, the swarmies. fans named themselves swarmies. There you go. It's the coolest yeah. thing ever. Um, so we had this Facebook group called Sepsis the Swarm, and it was originally meant to be a group for our gaming community. Okay. Um, because we have a gaming community on the Xbox. We are called Immaculate Connection Gaming, and we play Halo. Halo Infinite just came out. It's so awesome. I love that game. Um, But besides that, so we have this group called Sepsis the Swarm, and it was for them. And we eventually um, incorporated our actual fans into this group as well and just kind of combined them both. Yep, there there. it is right there. (laughs) I already joined. I already joined, I guess. Thank you all for joining. So they combined into one big group and it became sepsis the swarm like it is today and they all just called themselves swarmies after that it just became a thing that's cool yeah it was really awesome to see (laughs) and we we grow every day that's awesome absolutely so where were you when you first heard yourself on the radio I was actually in my house in, I think it was Rock 101. The first like real radio station. Like, my first big time radio station. was uh, Matt Connaughton. It was really? my first radio interview, yeah. I ended up playing us at it. I joined the band. I was in the band for a week. And um, when I met Will and all of them, they were like, Oh, like you ever done this? You ever done no, no. You ever done an interview before? Oh, you're gonna do lots of them. Like there was a lot of stuff. I I thought that you know he was exaggerating or whatever. But like <laughs> I can't even make it up. First week in the band, I had a radio interview at a radio station with the band. And then second week, I had a solo interview where I had to call um. <laughs> Um, this lady from ABA radio uh, in California and I was at work I was at work plowing and like so I've been in the band for two weeks I don't even know that much about them or anything like that and I'm making a phone call to a radio station in California like how's it going (laughs) (laughs) the first radio interview I ever did was on the Hawk and we actually got to play live that day um, acoustically. That's pretty cool. We we played the song more than before. It was awesome. Really fun song to play acoustically live. Mm-hmm. Love that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of that, do you think about ever doing an acoustic album? Me and Will talk yeah. about it all the time. Yeah, we've thought about that. That's do something it. I think we would like to do in the Just, future. That'd be yeah. cool if you guys did do something like that. Yeah. That'd yeah. be really neat. Me and Will, um, we both we play a lot of like classical guitar and like I used to be in jazz band and stuff like that. So we do love playing acoustic stuff and, and we write a lot of our music on acoustic guitars anyway, which is convenient because we already kind of have somewhat acoustic versions of them. It's just whether we sit down with the (laughs) madman and, um, and put them to forever tape which is a a uh, interesting process man it's, it's hard like it's it's so much different i grew up like playing parties and playing live stuff and i never like did doll work or anything like that it's like totally different animal playing to entertain people than it is to like this is going to be your your sonic mark that yeah. echoes eternity you gotta play like you know a robot I, this is going to be <laughs> yeah. played a million times possibly <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with the like I got one chance to show you what I can do and I'm pretty good at like I'm I did it more like a magician like here's the flowers 
you know, mm -hmm. but <laughs> if you film it, it doesn't look that eloquent. <laughs> See, that's why you guys like him in your band. Yeah. Great, great. Just a, you guys, all, 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 all three of you guys, you know, just really cool people. Thank, Thank you, man. you. All right, I'm, I'm going to flip this around on you guys. You can ask us anything. Okay, what made you want to start interviewing people? Well, I was uh, growing up, I used to watch Matt Penfield. Okay, awesome. Love that. Do you play any instruments? Nope, you got a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he wants to know if you play any instruments. Mediocre guitar. Acoustic. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I got into it because I talk a lot already anyways. And so I started, so I interview people. Uh, and I play the drums. I'm fucking badass. If you, if you can <laughs> if you, I'm okay. If you could remix one holiday song and make it into a death metal song, what would it be? What song? What song are you guys doing again? We can't say. <laughs> <laughs> that same song. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I would do. I'm not wrong. I would. I would do probably. Uh, uh, Silent Night. I think would be really fun to do. That's a good one. Yeah. So, yes. I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to say, uh, grandma got hit by a reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Oh my God. That's yeah. I forgot one. about that song. <laughs> I'll start one. working on it now. Yeah. <laughs> At least the vocals. That's no, but that's like the funniest stuff is like playing all this like technical and playing metal and fast stuff. And then it's like, go to, go to, Record Santa Baby, you'll be pooping your pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. It is, it is. All right. So, speaking of Santa, what was that one gift that you always wanted that you never got? Huh. I need to think about this one. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, I have an answer for that. Um, <laughs> okay. But I don't know that anyone accepts this. You might be a little younger. Yeah, I think y'all are still in your twenties, right? Like late twenties. Yeah. Um, yeah. At this table. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So mine was this little talking robot toy when I was a kid. I forgot what it's called now. It was like super cool. I know the ones that walk and stuff. Yeah. Like, walk. Nice. Cool. Like I remember the I remember the I remember the theme song for the commercial. <laughs> But I can't think of the of the of the Man. name of the robot. Anyways, Man, I they, would love to get this off friend. off my chest. Every single Christmas toy commercial, they always have like the dopest backdrop and the dopest setup for the toy. And oh, it makes yeah, the I know. toy look so much cool. Like I remember the Batman, the Batmobile ones, they would have like this foam mountain stuff and and they would shoot the rocks down and yeah oh, no. you pull the thing out of the box it's just kind of like oh Man, dude, <laughs> like, on, on the on the nerf commercial on the nerf commercial they got like they got like guys hiding behind like these like crazy things with their nerf guns to like shoot each other you're like yeah. oh shit no 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 and then you get it and it's just like a freaking toy it's a hunk of plastic. you don't have you don't have that no. same setup in your backyard little gym. no you yeah, don't yeah. Have it. around this no the, the stage really made a lot of those toys look cooler than they were Dude, my, that, my present would probably be like something that fired so like when i was like five it was probably a bb gun when i was 10 it was probably like a paintball gun like i ended up getting it eventually on my own but like it okay. was always stuff I was way too young to get that I wanted. You I see, yeah, I <laughs> so I never you see, yeah. there was this dollhouse that was meant for Barbies that I, I never got when I was a kid because I used to take Barbies and rip their heads off and uh, <laughs> I with them. I don't know why I did those. Yeah. You were destined to I be like a metal band. To do micro <laughs> plastic things. Back in the day, I yeah. don't know why. I used to play with a bunch of like boys' toys and other things. Like, uh, I, I had this Dragon's Lego set I used to love. I love that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yo, I still have that shit. <laughs> so I used to play with stuff like that. But on, yeah. on the topic of uh, toy torture, toy torture. 
that big out Lego sucks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The only one I ever did really did it with. Barbie? No, it was um, <laughs> it was a Teletubby I got in a Happy Meal. So it was like a crappy Teletubby because it was a McDonald's Teletubby. And I remember we had that thing hanging up in my basement. And we would beat it like a pinata. You know, there was no candy. Like, oh my God. <laughs> weird. I used to love Barney, too. When I yeah, was Barney was girl. enough. I used to love Barney. I would carry around my little stuffed Barney with me, like, everywhere. It's a little purple dinosaur. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know what Barney is. <laughs> I think everybody knows who Barney is, you know? Yeah. Maybe, like, maybe, maybe, maybe my way. kids don't. I don't know. Oh Barney is a dinosaur. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't rip his tail off. <laughs> you do. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> They're like, yeah, let's not. This is, you know, this is a children's <laughs> podcast, guys, so stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> You love everything yeah. about Barney. And it wasn't. Barney it's better than Teletubbies. That's our genre. Yeah. We play we play Barney core music. Is that a real thing, Barney core? Yeah, yeah, that's yes, what we do. Yes. Like yes. What was it, Max and Annie? I forget their Dragon names. Dragon I really Tales. do. I want to say it was Max and Annie. I'm yeah. not talking about yeah. Ruby and Max. I just remember the little tune that used to play at the beginning. What about Little Bill? Well, yeah. That show's canceled now, I think. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bill? Yeah, it has to be canceled. Yeah, Little Bill's Bill Cosby canceled created culture. it, so. Yeah. I think yeah. anything Bill Cosby related yeah. is canceled. Yeah. What about yeah. Franklin? I used to love Franklin. Yeah. Hey, Franklin. Franklin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or um, Little Bear. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How about Redwall? I'm bringing back some old memories now. How about Redwall? No. Best cartoon ever, though. I, I will say this. It's Red a Wall. children's cartoon. My favorite cartoon is... um, I'll go, have to go with SpongeBob. I love it's SpongeBob. It's a great I one. love SpongeBob. Red Wall, the kids Clifford one. the Big Red Dog. SpongeBob's a great one. So awesome. You have to go with Redwall. Speaking, speaking of Clifford, did you see that they're making a new movie? No. I did yeah. see that. What? Yes, they are. He's That's not crazy. that big though. They're making another move, another Clifford movie. Yep. Yeah. But it doesn't seem that big. He just seems like it's yeah, the big like, red dog. Yeah, <laughs> Come on. bigger than most dogs, but you know how like a cartoon he was like bigger than houses and shit. Yeah, he was you know, big. That's how he's supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> like I, yeah. like from what it looked like from the like quick little preview I saw, it looked like he was like half the size of a house. I'm like, oh they're trying to I used to read bit. the books and stuff. He used to help me learn how to read. <laughs> yeah, that and um, what's the other one with bears in it? There's a whole bunch of bears. Well, well, uh, bear, uh, bears team bears. Yeah. 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 Out the lion library. I don't think I read that one. No. <laughs> Sorry. You're alone. <laughs> yeah. So, what was your favorite book growing up? My favorite book. Yeah. Uh, into the wild. Does it matter what age? Nope. No, we're still growing up now. So <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, so, yeah, um, we're all still growing. I used to love the Demonada series. Fiction okay. book. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever read it. Not yet, no. Yeah, yeah I was a, I was a big like survival camper dude growing up, so I really liked Into the Wild. I liked uh Hatchet. I liked Call of the Wild. I liked I liked all of those those wild All the wild stuff. <laughs> all the wild the Zach Wild. All of the wilds were a big I've part of my childhood. Like, I mean, all, obviously, obviously like we're the gen we're like the Harry Potter generation. Yeah. And Lord of the Rings. That's Lexi's favorite series. Lord of the Rings is incredible. <laughs> Harry, Harry Potter. Potter read incredible. Harry Potter. I'll be Harry honest, Potter. I never read the Harry Potter book. Really? I never I didn't either. I did. You didn't either? <laughs> yeah. I never nah. read it. Oh, I did watch shit. the movies. The movies were cool. <laughs> yeah. Never saw the Harry Potter, never really saw Lord of the <laughs> Rings fun. either. Like, yeah. He's like don't you do Yeah, even even <laughs> you got for shame by Lexi, not just me. I know. And it's like I, know. I take my Harry Potter very <laughs> serious. But. Harry Potter is cool. 
I never read the books, though. So. My bad. <laughs> I forgive you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's one of us. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Mm-hmm. My daughter keeps texting me. I'm gonna have to get out here in a second. I don't know what's going on with her. So what? Um. So if that's the case, what is? This, what would you like to announce? I'm sorry. What announce? would you like to announce? Any announcements? The yeah. announcement. We have an amazing Christmassy song coming out. That's not Santa Baby. That we it's, can't say the name of. It. Is it Holy Night? <laughs> It, it is. Might, it is. It it's holy name. Night. I knew it. It might be Rudolph. It might, might be, be the intro to Die Hard. I can't tell you what it is. Thank you. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Thank yes, you. It is. It's a great one. <laughs> oh my God. It might be Grandma got hit, ran over by a reindeer. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting ten bucks on Silent Night. Okay. Silent Night. Okay. Are we putting money on this? I can tell. I can tell a lot of. Well, you can't put money on it because you guys know what it is. I can well, tell that's not fair. <laughs> that um. You can put a Nickelback tattoo on it. I could. how to play them, <laughs> but I probably won't. Most of these Christmas songs are the same type of chord progression. <laughs> so instrumentally, I mean, everyone's kind of a winner. There seems to be a theme here. Yes. <laughs> I wonder yes. why. But like besides, besides the Christmas <laughs> yeah. song, guys, if you haven't it's, had a chance yet to... the too, Christmas song that's in the major key. Right. It's the happy sounding one. Go check out our website if you haven't already. Go to sepsis.com, spelled F-E-P-S-I-S-S. Yes, there's an extra S at the end. Very important. Sepsis.com. Go there. Sign our guest book. Check out all of our merch that we got over there. If you want to sign CD, we can personalize them for you there. And um, we do stream on Twitch every single night. So if that's another thing you're into, you like live streaming, we do a whole bunch of variety types of streams. So we do just chatting, music, <laughs> oh, yeah, art, turkey one. cooking. Yeah, we got um, a, a turkey stream coming up. <laughs> a Thanksgiving stream is 12 hours, packed full of games and cooking lexi and i are gonna cook um day of thanksgiving so if you got nothing to do you're bored come check us out, out you them. could go to twitch.tv slash sepsis band one word spelled exactly like i told you earlier <laughs> so <laughs> two s's yes and two s's mm-hmm. at the end of the word we also have our gigantic worldwide debut live stream show so any of you that has not been able to see us or would like to see us but doesn't have a car or doesn't like the winter cold or don't like people in general, <laughs> you can watch us from your home. I'm Absolutely. very excited about this Now's show. December 11th. On the metaverse. On the metaverse. Because <laughs> mm. everything's meta now. <laughs> <laughs> and Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Yeah, and it's true. Please be sure if you have the app, check us out on Bands in Town. Please track us because that means the world to us. Welcome. Yes, track us if you want to know <laughs> where we're at and when. And what we're um, doing. The Bands in Town app will notify you well ahead of time and let you know that we are going to be in your area. <laughs> because we love to see you guys too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Quick question Are you going to be in Jersey anytime soon? Jersey. With the OTEP tour, yes, we are. Yep. Um, so the show originally got rescheduled, but it was at Dingbats, and I'm assuming it's going to be at Dingbats still. Yep. I might get. Yeah, uh, you can find that by following uh, OTEP's bands in town because um, I think only one of the shows are rescheduled right now, but don't quote me on anything because I will get in trouble if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's but, uh, this, though. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so if you're going to be at Dingbacks, you might be seeing me in person. That's, that'd be awesome, awesome man. Yes. I really appreciate that. Thank I got some you. friends from Jersey, too. They're coming out. They tell me it's a great venue. I've never been. Very excited. It's, not, it. it's really not that far from me. So I, if, I can make that, that. if I can make that happen. That yeah. is so I cool. Well, I hope to see you there, man. Mm-hmm. Can't wait.
All right, at this time, I'm going to thank you guys for coming, and I will let you know when all this is posted. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank man. you so much. Have a, great, have a great night, guys. It was nice meeting both of you. Nice meeting you.